catch their attention is a provocative uh, uh, recommendation that we have, and that is to phase out immediately the arming and training of Iraq security forces. We think this is a, an essential recommendation that people need to pay attention to for a couple of reasons. First, Iraq's security forces now number more than half a million. Over the last couple of years, U.S. taxpayers have spent more than $20 billion arming and training Iraq security forces. And at this point, the main problem isn't skills building or teaching Iraqis how to shoot. We can see in the news every day that, that Iraqis know how to use weapons. The main problem is allegiance and motivation, which is a political issue. It goes back to the central question in Iraq and the dispute among Iraq's leaders of what is Iraq? What should it stand for? And how should we divide the power between the different factions? And at this point, simply arming and training different sides of, of, of Iraq's civil war, which is essentially what we're doing through, through this security assistance program, is not in U.S. interests. And it's not in U.S. interests for two main reasons. First, it risks further inflaming the conflicts inside of Iraq. It could actually make it much more deadly situation in 2009, 2010 for innocent Iraqi civilians. Second, there's the problem of blowback and the potential for blowback against U.S. strategic interests that some of the alliances of convenience that we're, we're fostering at this point with some of the Iraqi actors that we're, we're working with uh, could actually turn against us and against our allies like Jordan and Israel and other key allies in the region. And this is a dangerous situation and we don't want to repeat the history for instance of uh, our work with the Mujahideen in Afghanistan in the 1980s which which in a sense uh, was a was an alliance of con convenience with some of the key actors that became the head of al-Qaeda and we need to head head off this by simply having a strategic pause saying we're stopping the training of Iraq security forces open the door for the possibility that we might continue this assistance in the context of a new international umbrella in the context of uh, uh, Iraqis who actually get together and have some sort of political consensus about what their country is. But otherwise, we're putting the cart before the horse and we're running the risk of further inflaming the violence inside of uh, Iraq.